Hey guys, Ryan and Liam here, back in the Fit Dads headquarters. Today's video, we're gonna run you through a deadlift and the most optimal way to perform the deadlift. Okay, so when it comes to deadlift, no matter your shape or size, whether you're tall or short, thin or wide, uh, the same fundamentals apply. So, Liam, if you would approach the bar for me, what we're gonna do first. Most people, when they approach the bar, I want you to stand all the way up to it. So actually let your shins touch it. This is too close, okay? So now if he were to actually bend over to pick up the bar, the bar will start to move forward, okay? And now he's all messed up his spot. Now approach the bar, make sure the bar is mid foot, okay? So if you come around the side here, you'll see the bar placement is at mid foot. It's not too far, so now, if he actually bends over to pick up the bar, don't do it just yet for me, if he actually bends over to pick up the bar, he's not gonna push that forward. What I'm wanting to do though, have a straight leg first, so don't bend your knees, hinge at the hips to pick up the bar, or at least to hold the bar rather. Now, again, he hasn't moved the bar, so the bar has not moved. The bar will not move. Now from there, all I want you to do, bend your knees until your shins touch the bar, now, in this position here, I'm gonna to need to come around the side again here. So, if you look there, that position is a perfect position for a deadlift. He's not gonna drop his hips any lower, okay? It's a pull movement, it's not a squat. Now, when he's in this position here, okay, he's still slightly rounded and still slightly hunched, but what I wanna think about doing, not necessarily rotating through his back or lifting his head up or dropping his hips even lower, all I want him to do is squeeze his chest up. So if he squeezes his chest up, naturally, this flattens out, he's created the thoracic extension. You've heard me talk about that hundreds and hundreds of times. As Soon as he did that, his hips didn't drop. When you look in this position here, hope you're comfortable holding that. His rear delt is perfectly straight over the bar, okay? Do a rep for me there, Liam. Nice, return. Up again. Now when he's holding it from here, he's gonna look up a little bit. Chest is up nice and tall. His first movement on the descent is gonna be a hip hinge. He's not gonna bend his knees first because if he does, bend your knees first, Liam. Now, I'll get you stand back up again. If he bends his knees like that, you can put it down for a tick. If he bends his knees first, okay? He's at the top of the movement like this. Bends the knees. What's the muscle that's taking all that load? Pretty much straight on the quads. There's nothing through posterior. What's a deadlift meant to do? Pretty much everything posterior. So when you are at the top, the first movement should be a hip hinge. Pushing the hips back. Almost think about doing a remaining deadlift. As the bar gets to around about your knee or just below, then you start to bend the knees and then you're back into the same position again. A big thing to watch out for as well is if you are bending your knees too early, what's gonna happen is as soon as you start to bend down, you're taking all the pressure through your quads and you've lost contraction in your glutes. Plus, every time you, you bend your knees first, you're gonna have to try and get that bar to go around your knees, forcing the bar to travel away from you. You want it close to your body, so don't let it travel away. You imagine moving house and you're trying to lift a fridge, right? <laughs> Is it gonna be easier, let's say leave the fridge, is it gonna be easier for me to lift it like this or more get in like this? Now we're just cuddling. Um, but yeah, so the further the bar is away from you, the harder it is to lift. The closer the bar is to you, the easier it is to lift. Definitely. Pretty simple. So stepping in, all right, stiff leg, bend over to touch the bar. Just bend your knees till you pause here, squeeze the chest up. Hips haven't moved, they've stayed where they are. Now stand up through here. Nice tight flex, squeeze through the glutes as hard as you can. So now, his legs, his posterior, everything's holding it. He's hip hinging, coming down. And now he's straight away back in the most optimal position in order to perform the deadlift. So from here, I'm in that position. All I'm trying to do is squeeze my chest up. You watch my hips do not move. All I'm trying to do is lock my lats, squeeze my chest up, and now I'm in a perfect position. So you're basically having the thought process of, you're trying to pull your shoulder blades down towards your back pockets because your lats follow all the way down into here. So if he switches on his lats, his lat insertion is all the way down here. So that's the best stabilizer of your spine that you could possibly have during a deadlift. Okay, now one thing that can happen on a deadlift, when you are at the top of the movement, if you come all the way up and you really exaggerate the elevation of the chest, 
go like this because you were told by all these amazing coaches that you have to have your chest really, really high. Notice when I'm in like this position here, I've got a massive arch in my back. My glutes are quite soft, okay? So my thought process when I'm doing the deadlift, hip hinge through here, or hip extension rather. My, my coaching cue is like, drive, you're driving to drive your hips into the bar. Yeah. Rather than you coming up and trying to, they think they have to go to extension to get lockout, whereas it's just a hip drive, push them forward, come up and just extend and tense your glutes as hard as you can. Rip. So preferred grip, everyone's different. What we try and encourage mainly is double over. Okay, so referring to both hands over the top of the bar, all right, gripping nice and tight. That's gonna help also build forearm strength. It's gonna help everything. It's gonna help your bench. It's gonna help your chin ups. Anytime you're gripping a weight, dumbbell curls, barbell curls, you wanna have big biceps for the beach too, guys. My preferred method, again, would be overhand, not necessarily from a power team point or anything. My background's bodybuilding. I was on stage a lot, so symmetry and balance was always a big thing for me. So um, I sort of felt if I would go over under grip or the hook grip, reverse grip, whatever you wanna call it, I was externally rotating my arm and I didn't necessarily need to. You can see from behind, if I'm like this, everything's symmetrical. If I open the composition or the position of my body changes, so therefore I feel like I won't be as balanced. Uh, as it gets heavier, you decide to go to that grip, don't yeah. you? So better. what happens is that the benefits of over of one over one under is the fact that as your grip fails, the bar will actually spin more into the other hand. Whereas you're both over, as soon as your grip starts to go, the hands just open and the bar will fall out. Yep. So again, I prefer doing double over and once I can't hold that anymore, once it gets to about 290, <laughs> 390. Um, I'll use straps. I'm not powerlifting. I don't care about anything like that. I'm just caring about trying to keep my body symmetrical and looking like a fit dad. Should you touch go in the short answer? No. If you touch and go, I think you'll break form a lot. Some athletes or advanced coaches or advanced uh, trainers would recommend this, which is fine for what we're trying to achieve. You're trying to do a deadlift, which is lifting a weight from a dead stop. If you do do touch and go, sometimes you lose your breath, you lose your form. For now, I would say pause at the ground and then power up. Your form will be a lot more optimal that way. So in saying that, Liam, take me through a set. Okay, again, there are many different stances you can do. You can do a sumo stance, you can do a conventional. Both are effective if you're lifting heavy weight off the floor and building your body. Wow. If you missed our first deadlift video, I'll put a link here, you can have a little look at that. It's a little challenge, who's the fitter dad, Liam or myself. Until then, fit dads out, happy lifting, get your numbers up. Enjoy. Liam here, back in the Fit Dads headquarters. Today's video, the number one exercise you can do, deadlifts, the five is for you. You missed. <laughs> 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 you missed. <laughs>